See, the problem is I ain't going nowhere. You can shoot at me, you can stab at me, take your best shot, suck a d They say he'll never be the same again. They say he's in physical shape, but he ain't in boxing shape. They say he'll never be that nigga with the shag again. They say he look old. They say he look slower. They say he didn't look the same in the Danny Garcia fight. Yeah, he here all y'all. But on April the 16th, he finna show the world. What they say don't mean sh Before we get into this next video, make sure that y'all hit my like button and subscribe to the channel if you not already a sub to the channel. The return of that nigga with the shag. Yeah, y'all finna get that nigga with the shag. Y'all ain't gonna get the same Errol Spence that you saw against Sean Porter. When he went in against Sean Porter, that wasn't the nigga with the shag. The nigga with the shag is the nigga that you seen walk through Chris Algieri like he was wet tissue paper. The nigga with the shag is the nigga that you seen had Leonard Bundu head dangling through the ropes like he was waiting to get a 619 from Rey Mysterio. The nigga with the shag is the nigga that beat down Lamont Peterson and had a smile on his face the whole time he was doing it, even though that was his own partner. The nigga that went over to Kell Brook's hometown in his backyard, in his home country, and made that nigga get down on one knee like Tim Tebow and tap out like he was in the Horse Gracie chokehold. That was the nigga with the shag. The nigga that went and beat the hell out of Carlos Ocampo, hit him with one body shot like he was Roy Jones Jr. back in 1997, beating on Virgil Hill and didn't even break a sweat doing it. That was the nigga with the shag. What y'all seen against Sean Porter, that was Errol Spence playing around in the streets, enjoying the fruits of his labor, going in, having the fat camps, not even being able to do strength and conditioning, not having the nutrition plan, right? Going in there, probably about 50, 60% of that other dude we was just talking about, but he was still good enough to beat Sean Porter. And y'all wonder why Sean Porter is mad and bitter? Y'all wonder why Sean Porter always have some little negative jab to say about Errol Spence, right? Y'all remember because that nigga with the shag was the same man that Kenny Porter didn't want Sean Porter to go nowhere near. He was the same man that every time he talked about Errol Spence, he talked about Errol Spence in much higher regards than he did his own son. And y'all wonder why Sean Porter always have some negative things to say and wonder why Sean Porter is saying, oh, I rate Ugas above Errol Spence. I rate Thurman above Errol Spence. Yeah, because you was lucky you didn't have to fight the nigga with the shag. But you know he was a shell of himself, but he was still good enough to beat you, Sean Porter. Right? <laughs> I know that shit get under your skin. And your daddy know it too. And it was already getting under your skin because every time you turned around, every time Errol Spence's name was brought up before you fought him, your daddy was praising Errol Spence, talking about how great of a fighter and how great of a young man he was even when he was training him. Right? That got under your skin, Sean Porter. And it really got under Sean Porter's skin when his dad went on Dante's Boxing Nation and everybody was calling for Errol Spence and Sean Porter to fight. And his daddy said, well, I know that they both champions. I know that my son is the WBC champion. And I know that Errol Spence is the IBF champion. But you know what? If they fight each other, won't they just have a non-title fight? We don't need none of the titles on the line. We could just fight each other to make some money, and y'all don't even have to put the titles on the line. At that point in time, Sean Porter knew my daddy knows I can't beat that nigga with the shag. You got lucky, Sean Porter, because you didn't have to face that dude. But 60% of that dude was still good enough to whoop you. And I know it hurt you. I know it hurt Sean Porter, along with all of the rest of the haters, even when they seen him come up off a car wreck, shouldn't even been living, new grill in his mouth, had to come out of a coma, had to walk again, right? Get up out of the hospital bed, half dead, train again, get back in tip-top condition, 
out of the ring a year and a half, going to ring against Danny Garcia, 60-50% of himself, probably 40% of that nigga with the shag, but he was still good enough to be Danny Garcia after going through all of that. And I know it hurts. I know it hurts. See, y'all want to see his career end. Deep down, y'all didn't ever want to see him back in the ring because he was the biggest threat to your favorite fighter. And see what that eye injury did? It only gave him more time to get back to that nigga with the shag. It only gave him more time to heat up, y'all. And y'all see him now in the ring, cut up like a bad bag of dope. And y'all scared. Y'all are scared because you know he coming after your favorite fighter. And the only thing y'all can do is express it with hate. See, that's how y'all express y'all fear is with hate. Y'all see him back. Like I said, the eye injury only gave him more time to get fully back to the nigga with the shag, mentally and physically. And on April the 16th, y'all gonna see that he's fully back physically and mentally. Y'all gonna see a destruction on April the 16th. Y'all not gonna see dude that was in the ring with Sean Porter. Y'all gonna see the return of that nigga with the shag running on all cylinders, right? Going straight into undisputed after this fight. And y'all don't like that. Let me hear the excuses y'all make when he go run through Oogies. Oh, cause it's gonna happen. It's only two weeks left and it's about to happen. Y'all express y'all fear with hate, but all that do is drive him. That drove him to get in better shape. That drove him to get his nutrition right, to get back to that nigga with the shag. So while y'all was hating, he was working and y'all gonna be mad. Bite blood at the bottom of your lip because that's all y'all can do when he run through your favorite fighter and move up and then dominate 154. Because I'm letting y'all know now, it's tunnel vision for Errol Spence Jr. That nigga with the shag is back. And this is what y'all didn't want. This is the dude that Sean Porter didn't want to fight. This is the dude that Danny Garcia was ducking. This is the dude that Floyd Mayweather told y'all he's on a whole different level. This is the dude that Floyd Mayweather told Keith Thurman and Sean Porter, hey, if one of y'all can beat Errol Spence, this young man that's standing right next to me, I relinquish my titles, I give y'all my titles, and I will give y'all a shot at me, the biggest payday you'll ever smell in your career. And they both turned it down. Don't forget, y'all forget, they both turned it down. And yeah, I know it's been a long time coming, but he just heating up because that nigga with the shag is back. And shit finna get real ugly like Kevin Durant and Esther Rowe had a baby when he blow up on your favorite fighter. And Rick Glacier, you got a nerve enough to talk about Errol Spence look old when you look like you been mummified. All you haters continue to hate. And all that's gonna do is continue to motivate. Because on April the 16th, I want all of y'all to keep the same energy, y'all. After April the 16th, keep the same energy. I don't want to hear y'all making no excuses and trying to downplay your Danis Ugas when Errol Spence run through him like a hit dog. Continue to hate and that will continue to motivate the truth. Errol Spence, Mr. Man Down, that nigga with the shag is back. Y'all make sure that y'all hit my like button, sub to the channel. If y'all not already subbed to the channel, and watch what I say. April the 16th, two weeks away.